Let's What's see. shaking bacon? I'm Let's Tony Simon. And I do a lot of food photography. Let's bake it, bake it, poop. We don't say bacon. <laughs> Let's bake it, bake it. Bacon, bacon. I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. So if you're into that, you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And today is a Lightroom tutorial. We are getting into two very specific tools. Two tools. Two tools? Two tools. Don't say that 10 times fast. But these two very helpful tools, the graduated filter and the radial filter, are two things that I love to use in editing my food photography in order to effectively draw the eye to that delicious food that you have photographed. So if that sounds interesting to you, you go ahead and stick around. So now if you are at all like me and you like some hands-on learning, then I definitely recommend firing up Lightroom right now. And then you can head to the description box below. I have a link so that you can access a download load of the actual image that I am processing today. So if you want to edit along with me, you just head to that link, download the image, import it here into your Lightroom, and then we can rock and roll together. And I wish I could take credit for this brilliant idea, but it was somebody else who left a comment in a previous video said, hey, go ahead and share the images with us. We can all edit along. So thank you so much. I mean, you guys leave the best comments. So thank you for being supportive of my channel and for giving me great ideas because I don't have all the good ideas just on my own. All right, so hopefully you had success downloading the image and you've got it now imported into Lightroom into your library and now you are ready to develop the photo so let's head to the develop module and you can see we've got these tasty little springtime cakes which actually are hanging out here and I'm resisting eating right now but we've talked about before successful food photography effectively draws the eyeballs upon first glance of an image straight to the subject so in this case our subject or at least what I intended to be the subject is the blue plate with the three little cakes on on it, which is now here, but in the picture, it's right there. So what are ways we can do that? Well, certainly we can follow the rules of composition, which I have done here. And if you have questions about composition, I haven't done a video on that yet, but there are some great tools online, which I will link below. But in addition to composition, we can use light and shadow as well as color to again, effectively direct our eye to where we want it to go. So something that a lot of people will do in their editing process is go down to the post crop vignetting tool which is definitely helpful to kind of cinch in the edges of the image to kind of darken them and really force our eye into the center of the image just like yay which kind of works but for me and this image I don't want the shadows falling on these berries over here and what I really want to do is create sort of a streak of light going diagonally across the image I mean soft and subtle but still have the brightest part of the image being diagonally across so that again our eyes rest very specifically on that blue plate and so the best way to do that is with the graduated filter tool so let's go ahead and remove the post crop vignette and instead, head on up to our tools menu, which is here just below the histogram. And you see this square guy right here? If you click on that, or if you hit M, that's the shortcut key. There's all sorts of keys that give you shortcuts that are a lot easier and quicker to use. So if you get those memorized, uh, that can be a helpful thing as well, just to expedite your editing process. So M, or you select on the graduated filter right there. So you pull the cursor out onto the scene and you click and drag while holding and you'll see these lines pop up. And I remember the first time I ever played with this, I'm like, oh crap, what have I done? What are these lines? What do they mean? <laughs> well, all you're doing right now is laying a mask over top of your image. And really it's just like it sounds. You've got your image with all the edits to it and we're just putting this additional layer that we can affect on top of it. So it doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but if you go down right here to show selected mask overlay, suddenly you'll see where the mask actually is on this image. So anything that is in pink is where your mask is. And so then any adjustments you make in this effects panel over here will impact that part of the image and only that part of the image. It's, it's not a global adjustment to the whole image. It is only to that mask. So for example, right here, if we dial back that exposure and you can see you've got your little preview window up here, or if I remove that overlay, you can see we've dialed down the exposure very specifically in that area. So you can grab that edge, you can pull it further across the image, you can see the further these lines are apart, the more gradual that fade is into that mask. 
You can make it skinnier if you want a more marked line, depending on the image, the composition, the style you're going for. You can additionally grab that center point and move it around the image, or you can even rotate it. So you can just slightly pull up off that center point and you can start to rotate it around. Pretty nifty, right? So this is really helpful, especially for an image like this where I want to very intentionally place some shadows without impacting the entire image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen this up a little bit and actually pull it back a little bit more this direction. Now I certainly don't want it that darkly exposed on the edge. So to wipe out all the effects that I have currently in there, just double tap effect. It'll clear that all out and then I can start to make the adjustments that I really want to make. So in this case, I really want them to look subtle. I don't want it to be kapow in your face. So I'm just going to dial back the whites a little bit. I'm going to take down the highlights a little bit and I'm going to inch down the exposure just a skosh. So we just got a little bit of shadowing on that edge, but again, it's not screaming at you that, oh, look, she's got a mask in the corner. <laughs> so, okay, that works on that edge. Like I said, though, I want to create a beam of light going through the center. So we're going to add another graduated filter and we're going to do that right here. So drag and drop and feel free to do this right along with me in your example photo. All right. And just to make sure I know where the mask is. There we go. It's all laying right here in the lower corner. So now I'm going to go ahead and do similarly, bring down the exposure. Very nice. We're already getting some nice darkness there, but again, not too over the top. Bring down the whites eh, right about there. And actually I'm going to drag this just a little bit further too. All right. And that looks pretty good. But now I'm looking at it and I do want to adjust that lower right one again. So if you just Reclick on the graduated filter and you can pick up any of those dots. That center dot again turns it back on so you can continue to make adjustments. So I'm just going to turn it just a little bit skosh more and I'm going to pull it down a little bit more this way. There we go. All right, much better. Okay, so I like how that looks. I've got that nice beam of light kind of coming diagonally, soft, subtle, but still there's light coming more directly through the uh, diagonal through the middle of the image. But now I'm looking at this guy right here, this cake, and then these pieces of mint. And I want to brighten those areas up very specifically, remove some of the mask from that spot. So what we want to do is go over to the graduated filter and we are going to pick up that one that is in the upper left corner. And then in order to just erase part of that mask so that we can reveal that cake underneath so it's not quite so shaded, I'm going to pick up the brush tool right over here. Now this brush you can see is pretty small right now. It's going to take a little bit of work to erase. So what you want to do and how you can control that brush is you go down here below the effects panel, you go right into the brush and we're going to want to select erase and you can see right now it's a pretty small brush size. So I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger. There we go. So and you can affect the feather right here. We're going to keep that right about 50%. It's just kind of a nice soft line where we're going to erase. And then in terms of the flow, that is how hard or soft is the erasing going to be? Like, are we really pushing it and really removing most of that mask or are we just lightly removing part of it? So I'm going to go ahead and dial it just a little bit. We don't want it to be super obvious that we've erased in this area. But now if we go back over that cake with this eraser, we can just slightly reveal it again. You can see it's brightening right back up. Pretty cool, right? So then I want to do the same thing with the mint over here. So if we pick up the graduated filter tool once again, now this eraser that I had is going to be probably just about right, but it could be a little smaller because here's the problem is if your eraser is too large for what you're erasing, let me show you an extreme example here. If you make it too big and you try to go over that, what's going to happen is once you go back, you're going to end up with this halo effect and you, you don't want that. So command Z and we use command Z, which is the shortcut key for undo. I'm going to go back in, pick it up, grab the brush right here, scroll down, erase, make it just a little bit smaller and the flow not quite so intense. And then we're just going to go over that mint just to reveal that bright, beautiful green again so that it's not quite so in shadow as it was before. There we go. We hit done. Now we've got our mint, we've got our cake, 
all's right with the world. So that is the graduated filter, but we have another filter. The one right next door to it is the radial filter, and you can access this, of course, by clicking on it, or Shift M will get you there as well. And this is very similar, you'll notice, you click and drag, holding and drag, and you'll get a circle. Okay, and so that everything automatically outside the circle will be impacted by changes you make in the effects panel. But what's fun too, and a really helpful thing if you're dealing with plates or circular objects, as many times we are here in the food photography world, is you can invert that and impact changes only on the inside of the circle. So here, for example, we're impacting only things that are on the plate, which is great. Now we can adjust the feathering on this. Right now I've got about a 50% feather. You can make it harder or softer, depending on the vibe you're going for. I'm gonna keep it right around kind of that middle range. And so what I can do, let's clear out all the effects, is I just want to sharpen up that food right in that area. Because again, sharpness draws our eye into the subject. And then I am gonna just bump up the exposure just one little bit on that centerpiece. Again, you can get the preview over here just to see what impact those changes are making. That's just gonna brighten up that plate just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna bump up the saturation. I personally like fully saturated images. That's what I go for, not oversaturated, but the more saturated colors is typically where your eye is gonna go. All right, so let's look at how that looks. Okay, so now I'm looking at this. I like how the light is working. I like how we've sort of scrunched in the image by shadowing the edges. We've sharpened up and brightened up that plate. But now I'm just gonna add one more radial filter. Gonna click and drag. Now as you pull these circles out, as you might have seen me do previously, if you grab the edges on these little points, it will extend that and it will extend the opposite point as well. However, if you only want to extend one point without extending the other side, just hold down the option key and pull, and it'll only extend that particular point. So here we just wanna frame it up so that it is over the edge of the plate, but not so much that we'll again create that halo effect. We don't want any of these changes to be overtly obvious. Again, we want this to be subtle. We don't wanna be smacking people over the face saying, look, I know how to use a graduated filter. It's, it's not supposed to be obvious. All right, so now I have got it so that it is impacting all the rest of the image except for the plate. And so what I'm gonna do here, again, zero out my effects. So I'm gonna dial back the highlights, which is just going to generally dull the rest of the image, really again, driving our eye to that plate. And I am gonna dial back the exposure, just a pinch. Maybe a pinch more. Looks pretty good. So let's just do a little point of comparison. So this is where we started. And then once we added our graduated filters, okay, kind of cinched in the edges there. And then finally, adding in the radial filters, and that center plate is exactly where our eyeballs are drawn to. It's a dynamic image. It's gonna catch some eyeballs. And I'd say it's pretty good. I mean, I'm just gonna sit here and toot my own horn. You should do likewise the same. You gotta be proud of your work, right? Now there are a couple of other features in this world of masks and filters, but we will save that for another tutorial that coming soon in a 2.0 version. But in the meantime, if you edit some photos and utilize these skills, feel free to tag me. I'm over on Instagram at the bite shot, or you can use our hashtag the bite shot I would love to see those go fangirl on you because I get excited when I see your work and certainly if you have any questions about any of this feel free to use the comment section below I'm happy to answer your questions and help you out and hopefully shorten that learning curve for you so with that I hope you have a fantastic day I hope you stay out of trouble and I will see you again here real soon okay bye